it's quite a laded program we're going to have today. And so without further ado, let's get our first guest on. George and Charles Anyamushigwe are two sons of repu reputed Nigerian diplomat who served the country well in its active service. Both of them are trustees of the Ushigwe Anyamushigwe Foundation, set up in honor of their father, and which continues to explore ways of deepening conversations on how to bring Nigeria into the global scheme of things. The 16th edition of a lecture series, which has served as the platform for that, comes up tomorrow. They are here to tell us all about it. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Mr. Charles, Uncle George, how are you today? Very well, thank you. Good to have you in the studio. Well, tomorrow is the D-Day. The lecture series are back. I know, of course, that, you know, President Muhammadu Buhari uh, once delivered the lecture. Dalai Lama delivered the lecture before. Tell us why, what, what caused the break, you know, for some years, and then why are we back, and what should our guests who have been invited, what should they expect at the lectures tomorrow? Well, the... 15th session took place in Abuja and uh, that's the last one. Yes. His Excellency Muhammad Buhari was the keynote speaker at that lecture and he talked on corruption. Mm. Prior to that, the coordinator general of the foundation, Michael Oshiguanya Mushiwe, was unfortunately murdered on our way to the east at Okada. So following the 15th session, I must confess that dealing with the passage of Michael so suddenly was a major setback for the family. He was the, one of the main driving force behind the lecture series. Uh, you are very familiar oh, with yes, Michael sir, yourself. Yes, yes I am. Highly cerebral and intellectual of the first order. Absolutely. Uh, grief is a funny thing. Uh, not funny, ha ha. And I'm sure Oji Okwe can relate to what I'm saying. She That's was recently thing. very Please accept our sympathy. Thank you very much. If I say that it has taken us this long to get our groove back, mm. I will not be lying. Mm. So I think Michael's passage had a great impact in the hiatus that we had mm. with the foundation. But yeah. we are back. And I'm sure the next question is, you are back just as peace passes on suddenly mm. as well. I mean, you, you took that off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So yes. I knew it was coming. It is, it is, uh, wow. That was another massive blow. Yeah. Um, peace. People are wondering why are we having the lecture. It's barely a month plus. Yes, we'll let that that's the question, really. But the reality is that she was very involved in this year's lecture. Um, we, she was the committee chairperson. Mm. Um, because we normally, after the trustees meet, we set up a committee for the next lecture. She was handling it, and she made sure she said it must hold. Mm. Funnily enough, on Friday, uh, leading to the Saturday and Sunday of her passing on, we held a meeting in her place, and the president that George, how far was that handle certain aspect of the foundation activity? I said everything is okay. It's, we're going to have it. Then suddenly, death being what it is. Mm came in the night or in the day or in the morning and stole her. And we said, well, we have to honor her. She's the only sister and the last child of the family. It's not an easy loss oh, in any way. And I we, imagine. I will use this opportunity to thank all those that have sympathized with us since she passed on, especially the, her industry. Yeah. They have not honored good. her very well. And they continue even to honor her. And the question is, is, is uh, am I going to continue? I said, beyond, I said, those that started Oscars are not here today. And the BAFTAs and the Bananellis and all that are not here today. But we hope to take it up to the next level because she was an energetic human being. 
we have brothers that have lost something that we don't think anyone can replace. Mm. It's not possible. Right. Yeah. Not well, possible at all. It's painful. Very. We are Arise News Condol with you. I accept yeah. our condol condolences. Thank you. May her soul rest in peace. I met amen her the first amen. time with you both. Yeah. Yes. And as well, we interviewed her. She was a vibrant woman. And, um, you know, her, her memory will live on with yeah. you, so for, for a while. You. Now, let's um, continue on, on the topic of this series, which is rehumanizing human experience. I mean, what, I mean, what is the topic about? What, what got you to um, talk about this actual topic, rehumanizing the human experience, which we know that a lot of things have happened lately, even just with the elections that just occurred. Um, people are saying, you know, have Nigerians lost their soul? Start off with you again. Um, um, if you look at the world today, there's no part of the world that's not a problem. From Myanmar, to Somalia, to Sudan, to Ukraine. The whole world is in a mess. To Syria. Where is the human spirit? Where is the human empathy? There's no more human empathy in the world than to talk of our country, Nigeria, with Boko Haram, headsmen, ritualists, killers. You really wonder what has happened to the that human empathy that people have for one another, that love that existed prior to now. And there is no end in sight. There is no end in sight. And you asked something, you said, that, why? Most of our topics are what our dad has written before he passed him, years before he passed him. He's a man that was um, a very, very deep thinker, a very, uh, he says that humanity is the basis of life. Without humanity, everything is lost. You look at our country today, what's happened in the last few months. If you can look at a fellow human being and just stab them in the eye, Absolutely. cut their, shoot them point mm. blank. For what? For power. That ends in four years or eight years. And the unfortunate thing is that the person committing that crime, even if he dies, the politician that he's working for will not even go to his burial. It's gone, it's gone. So when you look at all these things and you wonder where is the world going to, not only Nigeria, the world in general. And it is quite amazing that thanks to the, uh, I would like to say thanks to the um, technology, thanks to technology, we can now sit down here smiling and watching people die in Syria, watching people die Shooting someone and showing no more editing. You're, you're just watching them. And you're real, just, time. You yes. real time. Real time. Real time. War is real time. Yeah. The other day, Turkey, Syria, fifty thousand people dead yeah. in seconds. The earthquake. Earthquake. Mm. So really, we ha the the human race have really to go back to the drawing board. Absolutely. If someone can wake up and start bombing another country just to take it over. Okay. Oh, Uncle Charles, let me bring you in. Um, okay. Why the choice of former Prime Minister of, of Britain, uh, uh, Boris Johnson, uh, given his personality, Boris Terrell's, given even the, the way in which you know, he left his seat as, as Prime Minister? A lot of people have different opinions about him. But then he's the one who has been chosen to give this lecture. Why Boris Johnson? Well, when it comes to the lecture series, we always look for somebody who will draw attention, who has something 
to offer in terms of the lecture topic. Now, why Boris Johnson? When you say, if I come to Steve Ayorinde to give his perspective, and since I know Steve, nobody has called him a tribalist. Nobody has called him a racist. Nobody has called him all sorts of negative names. Then I'm speaking to somebody of my own ilk. Mm -hmm. So it is important to bring people with, should I say, perspectives different from yours, because the foundation of necessity would bring their own perspective to bear in their welcome address. Mm. And if everybody is singing from the same song sheet, yeah. it will not be an interesting conversation. So Boris Johnson brings to the table, table. a perspective that we expect to be quite different from ours because he has been called all sorts of names, including being a racist. So we feel that the perspective that Boris Johnson brings to the table will deepen the conversation for everybody. Because the topic of rehumanizing yeah. the human experience is such a very important topic. It's very Be deep, actually. Yes, deep. because yeah. what is life about? It's about being human. Right. It's about empathy, love. I don't want to go religious, mm -hmm. but now abided hope, the greatest of it mm. is, love. is love. But where is the love in the world? We are now so materialistic, it's all about dog eat dog and at the end of the day six feet under you take none with you so we want to bring back we want our nation in particular and the world in general to really sit back introspect and say where are we all going to with all this kill and go right mm. dog eat dog what are we achieving with it? So that is the essence of why this topic is being focused on this time around. In the and, it's not, and it's not only it's not only for Nigeria. That's right. It's all over the world. Yeah. Look at the border problems in the United States with uh, Mexico, Mexico trying to build the walls to stop. America is an immigrant society. Now the immigrants are now trying to keep other immigrants. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at it, it's really really close. You know, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So Steve has highlighted that uh, Boris Johnson will attend, will be the keynote speaker. Yeah. I understand that Charles Anyoku is also going to be there, yeah, as well true. as the Lagos State Governor Babajide yes. Songwolu. What other? And the director of Nigerian Institute of International Social Affairs. Affairs. This year, what we have done, you know, our lectures is always held at the Institute of International Affairs right. over the years. So this year, I would say the Institute of International Affairs have moved to this venue mm. where we are going to have the lecture because we had to tell them to join us, mm. to continue the tradition because we have a lot of respect for that institution. And um, we felt, yes, we are, uh, because of the, because we have had a lot of security issues surrounding mm. his arrival and everything, mm. it has been chaotic. And we is, said, is well, in town already? You know, no, arriving no. this evening. Okay, sorry. We'll be arriving this evening. And the, uh, and the reason we had to select a place where everything we hold, oh. from the uh, lecture to the banquet, That's right. just because of security reasons. It is uh, unfortunate that we have become what we are mm. in Nigeria. Before this, we never, but in so many years, we have brought the Dalai Lama, we have brought uh, Shimon Perez, That's we, right. uh, we have brought uh, Gore. Mm. After no, two months yeah. after 9-11, but we didn't have this type of security uh, problems mm. uh, that we're having now mm. that is affecting. But the reality is that Lagos is, is very... Is, I must give it to the Lagos but, state government under Babajide Somolu. You don't feel that you are in danger when mm. in Lagos. Yeah. They have got yeah. their security... Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, uh, details the, yeah, and uh, under control. Yeah. You don't I'm, feel I'm, threatened in Lagos. I'm sure Boris Johnson, threat. Prime Minister Boris Johnson will be fine. I mean, you recall, of course, that Lagos had um, Emmanuel Macron the other yes, time. And, and, he yes. to and he was at the shrine. And he was at the No, one thing, one thing you can give it for Lagos states, whatever they are doing, yeah. I hope they continue to and, and, and move. Because that is, I think it's the only state in the country that has had a sort of su succession program yeah. that leads to the next. They have a yeah. program from one they, to the other. Now it's to 20, 30, or whatever, yes. 50. Yes. So uh, in the next four years, I'm sure yes. the man will do. OK, okay right. quickly, if for those who may not know your father that much, um, you know, uh, Onyechere yeah, Ayamoshigwe. Um, his values, his ideologies, you know, all this lecture series um, is about him. Who was him? Who was on Yechere? I am Oshigwe. He's an enigma. A selfless father and a selfless human being. A man that believes that um, by owning nothing, you own everything, like mm. the Dalai Lama says too. Mm. And that was one of the, uh, what the Lama said, that he believes in Anya Musi was uh, saying that by owning nothing. It says, if you remove me, mine, I, you live a very happy life. And our dad, as we were growing up, we saw him doing nothing but be, he meditates a lot. He was never, been, he was never a politician. It was late, no, late, no, right late. You can't say that. Yeah, well, quite, late. <laughs> quite late. Quite late. The baby is here. Yeah, because um, later on in his life, being a philosopher and wrote a lot, and it's from his writings that we take uh, the topics we discuss at yeah. the lecture series. Of interest is that uh, the University of Ibadan has done, took up the study of his philosophy. Really? We have had yes. uh, people who have taken their doctorate degrees on Anya Mushiwe's development philosophy. People well, have done approach. their wow. uh, masters on it. Presently, if not for the endless strikes, mm. we are in... Uh, negotiation with the university, Nambiaziko University, Oka, mm -hmm. to have it as a degree, a course at the degree level uh, for philosophy. Wow. And they, so they are developing a curriculum in association with our foundation. So the work of Anya Moshiwe, a sage philosopher, mm. acknowledged by the Nigerian Philosophical Association, uh, as a sage philosopher, a deep thinker who spent time really thinking about how to, how the world can be a better place for all of us to live in. And uh, when he passed, we felt that what he did in private should now be brought to the public sphere because before he passed on, he was in discussion with us that now that we are grown up and can be running business, <laughs> he would go back to teaching. Because mm. before he got yeah. married, he mm. used to hold lectures and he was a psychic as well. So mm. he deeply psychic and used to consult and help people solve their problems. So, did you, did, you, did you take after him in what, I mean, you... Well, no, I uh, just said it's... All, all brothers wearing <laughs> white, you know, all the time. <laughs> you, know, uh, uh, you know, the... the I was actually going to bring no, no, no. that out Let me well. tell you something about this white. Let, let us put yes. it to rest here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we better put it to rest here. People feel that it's cold. People feel, that, you know, we have had it all. So it's yeah. white at a touch of red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our dad... When we, when we were growing up, our dad says that white is purity of mind. Purity. That if you wear white, it is difficult for you to be dirty because mm. you ask. You'll be careful. You'll yeah. be careful. Yeah. And people will be careful around you too. Mm. And it's true. I've seen it happen. But the most important thing is that he never forced any of us to start wearing white like him. 
Actually, I was the first when we came back from, I came back from the States. And I saw him, I said, okay, let me follow him. I said, we are white. And I liked it. And then gradually, uh, my other siblings started wearing white. One of us, my uh, second brother, was a bit reluctant for a long time. Then he started wearing <laughs> white. So it's nothing, and it's, it's very spiritual. He said that if you are, it, because you have the, have the purity of mind. Yes. And, and that was the major premises of his wearing white. And he lived that life. That was his life. Yeah. Nothing else. And we, not that we followed him. We, like we say, we can never fit in into his shoes because it's too light for any mm. of us. So collectively, mm. we will fit in. Yeah. Not me, not him. <laughs> uh, we said collectively yeah. as a unit because we believe in the group mind principle, mm. right. which is what comes home to my brother comes home to me. Mm. You know, when, when I tell people that I don't own anything, they say, why? I said, no, because I can go to Charles. What is wearing I can take? His wife will give it to me. That's how we live. Well, it's a communal life. It's a communal <laughs> life. But and it wasn't forced on us, though. Yeah. It was just, it happened. Mm. It I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Wanted... Yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. No, I'm good. I understand it perfectly well. And I congratulate both of you and your brothers for emulating your father in the way that you have. I wanted to touch more on the University of Ibadan taking up his, uh, you know, his work. Not at this point, and I understand that you know they've held several workshops. How does this happen? I mean, is it a continuous process, or is it? Yes, um, it is a continuous process. Um, we have that relationship with the University of Baden because, and Swan. well, and where Swan in South Africa, we oh, yes. got yeah. better. Okay. Yeah. So the philosophical department yes. are in collaboration with us to bring, uh, to examine his, his works and bring it into the academic sphere. Yes, they've held several workshops yeah. on it, and they've held one international workshop on it where they brought scholars from, I think, 25 different institutions from across the world to interrogate the thoughts of Emmanuel Lunyechero Shigwa Nyamushigwe. We are also in conversation for the second international conference to hold in 2024. So it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing. Mm. Right. Cool. Can you share with us some of the highlights of the series that you've had in the past? Oh, well, you know, one of the ones that I found very interesting was Women as the Salt of the Earth. Oh. Uh, my father had great respect for women, for womanhood. He believed that women were stronger than men, no matter what we say, because oh. the spiritual depth of the woman is greater than the man's. They are highly intuitive. They are very resilient. And that lecture topic was of interest because in society, women are not given the pride of place they should have. They sure mm. And when, even in my interaction as a, now in my 60s, I find that when women are in charge, things go much better than when men are in charge. You can say that again. Mm -hmm. And you must believe it. <laughs> Just believe it. And <laughs> that healthy respect my father brought to bear in us. Uh, I think it's important that that message goes out, mm. that women really, if they are given their, their right place in yeah. society and not treated with disdain, mm. the, even this rehumanizing that we are speaking about right. yeah. will be faster achieved. Yeah. achieved. That's true. Uh, yeah. It will be achieved faster. Well, then the uh, father says, um, like, you know, in families, you'd say that, okay, the girl is going to be married, mm. and that um, if she marries, she goes to her husband's place. Yeah. Well, that says that whatever, you have is your peace 
-hmm. My late sister will have the same. Mm -hmm. He never differentiated the between the, the, the male the lady, yeah, and, and the, the female. female. And it, till today, with the younger generation, with yeah. the grandchildren, they tell you that Papa says that what I, what I have, Kennedy can have, Raymond can have, yeah. you cannot have it, so whatever. Mm. And that is the way it is. Okay. And it gives them, at least they have the right. Yes. In the family, they have the right. Okay. Let me, um, I would like your views, uh, um, both of you, please, on the development that we are witnessing at the moment, given um, the way that the lecture series have preached love, preached uh, brotherliness and everything. You are from Imo State, but then you are Lagosians. But we know what is happening in oh, terms Lord. of, you know, identities and accepting each other. You know, politics seems to, you know, have come in. Only yesterday, there were issues from, you know, in Anambra where uh, the, the publisher of Champion you know, newspaper was alleged to have said something. What is, what would be your message um, to non Lagosians, shall we say, who are here, who are in Lagos, or anybody that is not necessarily from their state, but are, you know, taking out a living in other states? What message of love, tolerance, and brotherliness would you have for such a, a person? Well, um you know, when you look at Nigeria has become complex in the recent um, times. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, everyone, you might be traveling from here to the east, a car spoils in Ore, or even in Djibouti. Someone, people will come and help you. That's right. Not to kill you, not to rob you. They don't care if you're Igbo, they don't care if you're Yoruba. They'll take you into their home, feed you, and if your car cannot be fixed on that day, you will sleep in there. Oh. They'll give you accommodation and take care of you. That was the kind of life we had. Today, I will say something we should remove state of origin from our forms. Mm. From the passport, every form in Nigeria should remove state of origin. So you don't identify that you are from Imo or from Lagos. Lagos has been a cosmopolitan, it's a cosmopolitan city where everyone comes to look for their, yeah. build up their yeah. uh, careers, yeah get good jobs, go to school. And to make it. And to make it. This, <laughs> yeah. way, this is the state that yeah. uh, out of, uh, sometimes I said the Lagosians might even be in minority compared to the people that has come in. But that does not take it away. You can come to someone's house and try to lord him over, over him. him. You have to appreciate his tradition, culture, yeah. way of life. Yeah. And try now to understand them. Yes. But what happens? People come into, into a place that you try to lord it over other people, but you have to understand the people. Respect so Respect host. them. You can, I cannot go to America now and go to New York, for instance. I just get into Harlem <laughs> and think I'm going to be... Uh, yeah. It's not possible. But at the same time, the natives of the state should equally have the patience and tolerance to accommodate other people's views without being violent That's right. or without being angry yeah. or without you, and, stop, and not to use hate words because hate words is now exactly. crazy in this country. Uncle well, just, what, just last 20 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> what I'll say is that yeah. Nigeria, we love one another, yeah. we respect one another. Yeah. We've known each other. You are a brother to me, and I've known you for donkey years. I don't, I don't even know your tribe. It has never been an issue. Right. So the important thing, the politicians should leave the citizens alone. 
they are the primary cause of the confusion. Mm. We all worship in the same churches and in the same mosques, depending on our religion. Yeah. You, there is no issue of tribe. We have parties, we invite each other. We are not looking at tribe. We marry each other. We mar yeah. And the for, my first son <laughs> yes. is married to a girl from Ekiti. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, in the family, we have, in our own generation, we are married from Wari, we are married from Bini. Mm -hmm. So it's, and as my children say, they, the problem is with our generation. Mm. They don't see yes, tribe. Exactly. And thank God there is hope in that. But I would ask our generation to stop polluting mm. the minds of our people because selfish uh, utterances yeah. for personal gain yeah. is not the best. It's not. They should be more, they should mind themselves. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. That's the way it should that's be. It, yeah. That's really, really the way it should be. Yeah. I'd like to thank both of you for coming on the morning show thank this you. morning. And I wish you success in your series. Thank you. In tom in tomorrow's yeah. lecture, yeah. Yeah. Wow. because yeah. you are invited, yeah. OG, invite you me. are invited. No. <laughs> <laughs> the invitation is invited. Fantastic. I hope we'll see you there <laughs> because you are on air. Is it open to the public, though? Yes, yeah, the lecture is open to the public, the dinner but, but the dinner is private, and your invitation is downstairs. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, I hope to see you there. Well, nice Thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You.